This is Sabina Pan CPA. I'm the founder and principal of Base CPA Plus. We advocate less taxes and more profits. In today's video, which is the part two of a series three, last time we look at the best tax defer retirement plan for self-employed, freelancer, and small business owner. Then we were asked about highly profitable small business owner. And this is what I see as an increasing trend. You have small business owner because that business is more mature and they have been there for quite a few years, they can afford to, and they want to contribute more than the $57,000 upper limit for SAP or 401k. The question is, what are their options? So in today's video, I will talk about the regular defined benefit plan and 412i plan. As you can see, the gray bar represents the maximum you can, can contribute under a 401k plan. And the light green bar is the regular defined benefit, i.e. pension. And the dark green is the 412, 412i plan. Just like they say, the more things they change, the more they stay the same. The regular defined benefit plan is your grandfather's retirement plan, the traditional pension that so many employers have stopped offering because they can't afford it anymore. However, it can still be a great choice for older, highly compensated business owner with few employees. The first pro for this plan is that it lets you guarantee up to $230,000 in annual benefit in 2020 index. Let us sink in for a moment. This is annual income in your golden years. If you're dreaming of retiring to a quieter and, and a small country in the tropics, this amount will allow you to live like a king. You can contribute and deduct as much as you need to finance that benefit. You will calculate that contribution according to your age, your desired retirement age, your current income, and various actuary factors. So the first scenario I run for you is that you want to retire at 62, but with 165,000 pre-tax income per year. So under the regular defined benefit, if you're currently aged at 45, as we always encourage you to save as early as possible, in order for you to achieve 165,000 pre-tax income per year, retiring at 62, starting at age 45, you had to put in $80,000 per year. But if you currently, you at 55 already, with, with seven years to go to your retirement, then each year you have to contribute $211,000. The second scenario, this is running with the 230 maximum pre-tax income per year. Again, retiring is 62 if you're at 45 right now. If your business can allow you to, and you want to, then you can contribute 111,000 per year. And people ask me now, what is a 412i plan, which is not very common. It's, it's also called 412e. It's a defined benefit plan exclusively using a combination of an annuity and life insurance or guarantee annuity. Because their return rates can be smaller, that's why they would require more contribution each year. And this is the tax qualified benefit plan. So any amount that the owner contributes to the plan becomes available immediately as a tax deduction to the company. So we talk about the pros and cons. What are the cons for this kind of plan? The biggest problem with the defined benefit plan is the required annual contribution. If somehow your business doesn't have the money in one year or two, you still have to pay. However, you can contribute a defined benefit plan with a 401k or a SAP to give yourself a little flexibility. So in the previous example, you are 45 right now, your business is doing really well, and you like to have the maximum allowable $230,000 per year when you retire at age 62. By the same time, you're not confident that you can commit to that much every year, right? You might want to set up a defined benefit plan with a $50,000 contribution, then pair it with a 401k for another 50,000. If a business is poor in a particular year, you only commit to contribute $50,000 to this defined benefit plan, but then you can skip the 401k for that year. So now with the part one and part two, we have discussed the tax deferred plan. That's because we assume that you are better off taking a tax deduction 
for your contribution now, then let your asset accumulate tax-free over time. And then when you need them for retirement, you pay tax on withdrawal at ordinary income rates. That's a great strategy. If your tax rate is higher now, then it will be retirement. You benefit now by avoiding tax on contribution, which put more to work for you today. And you benefit later by paying less tax on withdrawal. But that traditional pattern doesn't always hold true. Maybe you're young, just starting your career and your income slow. Maybe you're transitioning from one career to another or one business to another and your income is temporarily low. Maybe you think the tax rate in general will rise. Today's top marginal rate for federal tax may seem high at 37%, but that's actually quite low by historical standard. In future video, very soon, next, coming up this week, I will talk about the higher income tax that's forthcoming because of the deficit the country is running and also the potential political landscape that that may change in November. So a little bit of taste for the part three of this series is we will discuss a truly tax-free retirement plan. Would you like to hear that? Then stay tuned. Again, this is Sabina Pan CPA at Bay CPA Plus. We advocate less taxes and more profits. Thank you for listening.